David Ma was a British neuroscientist who was one of the pioneers in the development of the field of computational neuroscience. He was famously known for the development of the computational theory of human vision, in which he described the visual system as a set of algorithms that tend to reconstruct one's physical environment from the information received and stored in the photoreceptors. During his research with the vision system, he soon realized that the attempt to understand the vision system completely was a heavily complex problem to be tackled at only a single level of description. For example, only at the level of neurophysiology. While the neurophysiological data could allow one to impose biologically plausible constraints on the development of a comprehensive theory of vision, it will not be sufficient to characterize the visual phenomenon alone. In explaining this problem, he stated that seeking to understand perception by studying only neurons is like trying to understand the flight of birds by studying only their wings. It is simply not possible. This realization led Mars to develop and propose three levels of analysis, namely the computational or functional level, the algorithmic level, and the physical or implementation level. Mars stated that a well-rounded theory of human vision could be created if vision was articulated at all three levels. Following Mars' proposition of three levels of analysis, it has been used for over decades to explain and understand various aspects of human and animal cognition. In this video, we will dive deep into understanding what each of these levels are and understand each level as applied to the study of reinforcement learning. At the computational level, we're essentially investigating what is the goal of the computation and the logical strategy needed to carry it out. The computational level of analysis describes both what the problem is being solved by the information processing system and why this problem is being solved in the first place. In other words, the computational level simply gives us a description of the input-output behavior of a particular system. Traditionally, Analysis at this level has been the domain of research for philosophers, behavioral psychologists, as well as linguists and computer scientists. By considering the goals of an information processing system, specifically how to capture the properties and events of the world that are significant to this system at hand, we develop theories that show how a reliable and accurate representation of the world can be computed by cognitive structures and systems. For instance, in the context of reinforcement learning, at the computational level, a key goal of the decision-making system is the maximization of rewards coupled with the minimization of punishment. The logical strategy the decision-making system uses to achieve the maximization of rewards and the minimization of punishment depends on aspects like the type of rewards the decision-making system aims to pursue and the way they represent the environment state in which they are operating. The computational level of analysis is necessary but not sufficient when describing an information processing system or a cognitive system for that matter. If two information processing systems have the same computational description, then they are considered weakly equivalent systems. Cognitive science, however, requires more than such weak equivalence explanations. A strongly equivalent model is one that matches a human subject at the computational as well as the algorithmic level of analysis and instantiates its algorithms using the same functional architecture. So what is the algorithmic level of analysis then? At the algorithmic level, we are essentially asking a slightly different question. Here, we want to investigate how can the computation 
be implemented and what input output representations are needed for this. The algorithmic level of analysis focuses on the specific steps or algorithms employed to the solving of a problem by the information processing system. In particular, the algorithmic level is concerned with how the input and output of the system are represented and how the input is transformed into the output. Within cognitive sciences, research at the algorithmic level is most often associated with the work done by cognitive psychologists as well as psycholinguists. One approach to describing an information processor at the algorithmic level, mostly from the cognitive psychology perspective, is to identify the overall problem and then break it down into sub-goals, which can in turn be broken down into sub-goals and so forth. Researcher Cummins in 1983 described this process as functional analysis. In the context of reinforcement learning, following the computational goal of maximizing rewards and minimizing punishment, the algorithmic level answers how the decision maker learns which specific states of the world predict the rewards and what specific actions will allow the attainment of these rewards. The recursive decomposition of a problem at the algorithmic level, that is breaking it down into goals and then sub-goals and sub-goals of the sub-goals can sometimes result into a unique problem. How does one know when to stop breaking the goals into sub-goals? This further leads to the problem of understanding where do we cease the decomposition of the problem at hand. The answer to this problem lies within the functional architecture of the information processing system, which acts as a bridge between the algorithmic level and the implementation level of analysis. Additionally, this also depends on the type of research question that one is asking. The importance of the algorithmic level of analysis is that once we have a description of how a particular system is solving a problem, then we are in the position to making more stronger claims about its equivalency. However, we cannot proceed any further without diving deep into the final level of analysis, which Ma claimed to be the physical or the implementational level. At the physical and or the implementational level, we're essentially investigating what is the physical realization of the algorithm that we have just discerned at the algorithmic level of analysis. In this level of analysis, we're essentially asking questions about the physical and in this case of cognitive psychology or cognitive neuropsychology, questions at the level of physiology or physiological substrates that are giving rise to the steps used in the algorithmic stage by the information processing system. Here our goal is to understand the hardware that is giving rise to the cognition and behavior observed and in doing so map the algorithmic steps at the neural level. In the context of reinforcement learning, this is mainly focused on understanding the functioning of the system called basal ganglia, which is a collection of four brain nuclei that have been long associated with learning, action selection and decision making and are putatively studied in the context of reinforcement learning. The idea that basal ganglia implements reinforcement learning algorithm stems from the close correspondence between the responses of midbrain dopamine neurons and the reward prediction error signal at the heart of algorithms that explain reinforcement learning. The striatum, the input structure of the basal ganglia and a primary target of the widely broadcast dopaminergic neuromodulation is a prime candidate for learning the values and biasing action selection 
so as to implement the reinforcement learning policies of reward maximization and punishment minimization. Indeed, plasticity in cortical striatal synapses is modulated by dopamine signaling in perfect accordance with the effect of reward prediction error on learning in reinforcement learning algorithms. Today's video was brought to you by the Brain Cyclopedia channel. If you liked our content, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Also, leave us a like and let us know you liked the video. Share this video with someone you think will benefit from today's content. Finally, do not forget to comment what you thought about the video and or any other future video requests. And finally, follow us on all of our social media sites. We'll see you in our next video.